picture here is myself and uh, three other members of the Third Squadron, Fourth Cavalry Regiment. In 2007 and 2008, uh, I flew about 600 hours um, supporting operations over Baghdad and Central uh, Iraq. Thank you. And in that time, I threw about a, flew about 130 combat missions supporting uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom. And our team was uh, significantly involved in supporting ground forces in the Battle of Sadr City in March and April 2008. In a, in a, and I hope that that battle uh, in history will be noted as a turning point in the war uh, against terror, as well as uh, freedom for the Iraqi people. But in my time, I've flown five uh, military helicopters. I flew my, my sixth uh, this past fall, Robinson R-44, on a, on a quick flight. And those six helicopters have taken me to seven countries, and I've flown over 2,200 hours. And what does 2,200 hours feel like? Well, if you look at 2,200 hours is approximately 92 days. Uh, and it's also equal to about 1,100 flights, which is if you break each flight down about two hours per flight. And if you add an additional 45 minutes for uh, starting, stopping uh, per flight, you add another 845 hours, and you end up with... 3,045 hours or 126 days living in a helicopter. Massachusetts requires each one of you kids to be in school for a minimum of 180 days. If you consider that you spend six and a half hours per day in school, that equals about 1,170 hours per day. And if you take the 3,045 hours that I spent in a helicopter, it equals about two and a half years of school or first, second, and third grade and half a third grade sitting in a helicopter. Another way to look at it is the average speed of a helicopter is about 80 knots or 100 miles per hour. Um, if you take 2,200 hours and you need to go 100 miles per hour, it would take you about 22,000 miles or 220,000 miles. The circumference of the Earth is 24,901 miles, according to a Google reference, which equates to about eight trips around the world in a, in a helicopter. So what I fly, most of that time was a, an H-64, a Boeing H-64 uh, Longbow Apache. Um, if you look at it, uh, you'd think that most of my questions would assume have been about the, the guns and rockets and missiles, especially from kids, and I'm asked, uh, have I shot it? And, and I have. Have I been shot at? And I have, and I shot back. Um, fortunately, by the looks of this ugly yet beautifully intimidating helicopter, uh, I didn't have to shoot it too much because its mere presence would make anybody think twice about what they were going to do. Um, so if you look at a, a controller, I want to kind of explain this. This is an Xbox controller. It's got about 14 buttons and maybe 18 actions if you move it in some direction. Um, and, I, and I find them rather complicated. And if I sit down with my son to play it, he breeds me rather handily because I, I don't, just don't know how to control that. Well, this is the Apache <laughs> controller. And it has 28 buttons and about 55 actions and an interactive screen on it. And when I, when I use this, I'm supposed to do it uh, in complete darkness, uh, potentially over a town like Baghdad at 3,000 feet, diving uh, into the city uh, while managing f up to five radios and a digital network, and I find it rather easy. Um, so I don't know what scares me about an Xbox, and it may just be a generational type of thing. So a little bit about helicopters. Um, they're, they're, they're truly amazing for what they can do. They're, they're extremely complex. They can help defend, and they fly vertically and forwards and sideways and upside down, and they can help save lives. Um, they can also secure and uh, observe, and they lift people up, and they, they fly backwards, uh, and they rescue people. Uh, they can resupply, um, and they can do all kinds of amazing things, but potentially they do it because they, they hover which means to hang or fluttering suspended in the air. And, and per the dictionary, or actually www.dictionary.com says the, the helicopter hovered over the building. And it's that capability which differentiates it from an airplane, because an airplane cannot hover. So if you look at the origins of vertical flight, there are there is so many people that I, I, I can't mention that, that have were involved in, in making helicopters. And I, and I just want to mention two. One of them was Thomas Edison. I feel obligated to mention him because I work in his company right now that he started, and, and he pays the bills, or his company pays the bills. Um, but in 1885, he was given uh, some investment money to look at developing a helicopter. Um, and generating an engine for that helicopter. But the helicopter uh, kind of burned in an explosion. But what they determined, uh, he did, calculated that a, a helicopter in order to fly and be effective would need a, a power to weight ratio of about three to four to one. 
And then in 1944, Igor Sikorsky, who has his Sikorsky company uh, just down the road in Stratford, Connecticut, uh, developed the first production helicopter, which in 1944 was the R-44. That helicopter, um, you know, it was capable and it could fly, but it really didn't have the, the capacity to move, move lots of people or equipment because it just didn't have the power of the engine. And then along came the turbine engine, uh, which really changed the, it enabled helicopters to do what they can do today. And, and what I'm holding right here is a, is a, a, a powered turbine from a GE T700 engine, and it's the same turbine engine that powered the helicopters that I fly, the, uh, the Apache. Um, this, what's amazing about it is it, it spins in the helicopter at 20,000 revolutions per minute. So to put a perspective on that, if you took this uh, turbine and you put it into the hub of a bicycle, um, like a 26-inch uh, standard mountain bike, and you spun it at 20,000 revolutions per minute, it would propel that bike forward at about 1,600 miles per hour or twice the speed of sound. Um, and it also, two of these engines go into Blackhawks and Apaches, and they, uh, they provide about 2,000 shaft horsepower, which enables a helicopter to generate the lift to, uh, that's a Blackhawk or Apache fully loaded is about 23,000 pounds um, or equivalent to about two really large elephants. And it can take it uh, you know, upwards in excess of 6,000 feet above the ground and, and still fly and perform its mission. So I, I sat with my, my artist, my, my daughter, and we decided to say, okay, what is cool about helicopters? So I just kind of want to depict a few things that they can do. Airplanes have to take off from one runways, but uh, helicopters can take off from just about anywhere and straight up and go all kinds of cool directions. The, uh, they can also help rescue animals, like this poor horse that falls into a crevasse and falls on its back and somehow manages to call a rescue radio and guide him into his location. The horse goes up and, and it takes it back and rescues it. It's one smart horse or perhaps it was an iPhone or something cool like that. I'm not sure. But they also help rescue people. Um, and, you know, and stuff like we've recently had the uh, Superstorm Sandy or, you know, something like Hurricane Katrina where people go up to the top of the houses, helicopters come and, and safely bring them back or a, a, a ship that might be out at, at sea and it, it sinks um, and the helicopter come uh, kind of like the uh, Sebastian Younger's The Perfect Storm, which is a true story where the Coast Guard rescued people out in the ocean. And that's the only type of craft that could actually perform that task. And they can also do stuff like save animals in, in the forest if there is a forest fire, come in and drop a bucket of water on it and uh, save the trees and save the, the animals. Hooray. So I have, I have taken helicopters um, and I've landed them throughout the world. I've put them, on the, I put them on the streets of Dallas and I actually landed a helicopter at the entrance to the Alamo Dome and I once did a air show in Linköping, Sweden. And for all the people that I talk to, one of the most uh, often asked questions is, is how fast is a helicopter? And I would say they're fast, but they're really not that fast. Um, yeah. They can actually go 220 miles per hour, which, you know, that's pretty fast. But a, an F-18 flies about 1,300 miles an hour, and, and that's really fast, but he can't stop and, and pick somebody up uh, and hover. So, oh, that's cool. But I'll take an Apache any day. So why can't they fly fast? Well, if you ever take in a, an aerodynamics class, or for you kids, if you get involved in, in aerodynamics and engineering, uh, some of these are the terms that would explain to you why a helicopter can fly and why it's limited in certain capacities. But it's sort of complicated. So I don't want to get into all those terms, so I'll try and make it not too complicated. If you look at a helicopter from the top down, its uh, rotors will spin counterclockwise. That's most US helicopters. There's a lot of European and foreign helicopters. They actually spin the other direction. And I don't think there's any other reason other than maybe flipping a coin that how they were designed that way. It was either they were going to go left or they were going to go right. That was the only two options. Well, if you put a helicopter in forward motion, and we'll assume for this case that it's flying forward in 220 miles per hour, that red or the lower side of the rotor is actually the advancing portions of the rotor blades, and that blue side is the retreating side, which is actually going in the opposite direction of traffic. If you look at, so there's the advancing and the retreating side. If you look at the advancing side, uh, uh, rotor tips will spin between 400 and, 400 and 500 miles per hour. And if you add the speed that you're traveling, you'll get a total of about 620 miles per hour on one side. But the retreating side, if you use the 400 miles per hour that you're going 
uh, the blade tips, and then you subtract the forward flight, you'll end up with you only got 180 miles per hour on, on the retreating side. And it's this differentiation in, in lift that cannot be compensated for for those aerodynamic principles. And as you start going fast, what happens is you got such a different on, on the amount of lift on one side and less lift on the other that your blades begin to stall, uh, no longer producing lift, and the helicopter rolls over and flips, and that's a really bad thing. So do helicopters need to go fast? Well, do they need to go fast for medical reasons? Do we need them to go faster as, as we look around the world and, and we get more and more of the population growth where you know, airports can't add runways to get more people in and out of town? We can't just go down to Logan and add a second runway or it'd be off in the water somewhere or we'd have to put lots of rocks and other things out there to build it. So we're, we're limited in our capacity. So can a vertical helicopter come in and, and, and take away from doing regional flights? Do we need our military to go faster? Do we need a police to go faster? Well, today we are. There, there are already some aircraft out there that have, that have kind of gone over this hurdle like this V-22 Osprey tilt rotor where it can actually take off like a helicopter and then its engines and propellers rotate forward and it flies like an airplane. Or this helicopter which was being designed by Sikorsky and it's an S-97 Raider. It actually had a predecessor helicopter called the uh, X-2 that in uh, September of 2010 uh, flown by a former Army uh, pilot by the name of Kevin Bredenbeck uh, went about 290 miles per hour. And then there's another aircraft that's being developed by Eurocopter called the X-3, which is sort of half helicopter and half plane with two propellers on the front of the wings and then uh, it, its main rotors on the top. And it, and it can fly. It's achieved this past year in May of 2011, uh, speeds of about 275 miles per hour. So the question is, how fast do helicopters uh, really need to fly and, and what might a futuristic helicopter really look like? And those are the questions.